All right, YouTube, I'm not sure if this is the first flight you're seeing. Uh, we're probably gonna have three or four flights. The true maiden will fall um, either at the beginning or at the end, depending on how things go and if we crash. So we're gonna talk real quick about our battery. We've got our 3200 4S, the center gravity that we marked in the build radio setup video part is exactly where it is. You also notice that I marked the 2200 4S way up here. So just so you know, that also worked. My best flight was on 2200. It was off camera because we were messing with our forward programming. So we're gonna talk about that real quick. So that's with 3200. Uh, my hope is to go ahead and fly on 4S 2200 if everything survives. I've got two of those potentially. And then I've got a 3S 30, or 2200 and a 3S 3200. So we're gonna see how this thing performs. As soon as we get it dialed in, We'll think about trying with a 3S. Um, power saves lives in airplanes, and that's part of the reason, and we'll use the smart checker, of course, the XPC 100. Uh, power saves planes lives. So, the other thing too is cycle your gear. Let everything close, and then open them back up before you fly. The same thing like with Supreme Hobbies. You'll save yourself lots of trouble. So we're gonna walk down to the runway and take off. All right guys, the much anticipated Boeing 737 MAX 9 by XPR. We're gonna take off, we're gonna fly. Hopefully it's beautiful as I think it's gonna be. There's gonna be some extra flights in this video, so keep watching when this is over. Oh, we're starting with 4S, 3200 milliamp smart pack, okay? Gear up. Oh, it's flying so much better on this mode one. We did some forward programming adjustments from our Maiden. The Maiden will follow. Oh, this is so much easier to fly, Megan. Good. Look how good that looks. There's a sign there just to show you the ups. Man, what a beautiful sky for flying in. It's flying way better with this one X. How's the focus? I have no idea. Hopefully it's okay. Using a little rudder to coordinate in here. The rudder likes to roll this plane bad, guys. Going right overhead. Oh yes, that was about 30% throttle. Just so you guys can tell, I am in. Three minute flight timer. Stay right where you are, I'll move around you. Okay. Man, that thing looks so gorgeous. The thermals are kind of kicking me around a little bit. I'd like to have just a little bit more stabilizer, but it's definitely manageable. You feel the wind at our back? Mm -hmm. Not exactly great for flight characteristics, but it's okay. I'm gonna come around for a I'm just like scared to death to slow it down, guys. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna slow it down and just glide it a little bit here, about 15% throttle, 20% maybe if I'm lucky. Look at those gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous lines. Show you the ups. I don't wanna do a whole lot more than that because it's already getting into a stall. So I'm gonna get it flying again. Okay, here we go, gliding. Man, that thing looks good. 42 seconds left on the three minute flight timer. This is a full speed pass. It's kind of out there a little bit, obviously. Going way out this time, we'll do a simulated landing attempt. Okay, out of the throttle almost, about 10% throttle, gear coming down. Oh yes. Looks so gorgeous. Look at those landing lights. Oh yeah, she flares nicely. Okay, 42 seconds constitutes another pass or so. Okay, we're five seconds. This thing will fly on a 2200 4S just fine. Okay, gear coming out. 
getting into the final. Just feeling that wind at our back. Relaxing it some. Gonna just let it relax in, okay? Look at that flare, guys. Look at that flare. Very good ground handling on this plane. Very good ground handling. I'm having no problems keeping that where I want it. I'm gonna try to turn around, back taxi it to us. A little bit of a crab on the ground there. Probably just need to straighten the, one of the mains is probably a little bit out of alignment. But man, can you argue with how beautiful that thing is? And that is gorgeous. The sun came out. Did you see the shadow on the ground? I thought the shadow on the ground was like a squirrel running out. <laughs> so I literally was trying to respond to a squirrel that didn't exist. I did not see that. Oh, that happened. I believe you. Keeping the EDFs out of the power when I go over the dust piles, I don't want to suck something in and have a engine failure. Okay, so let's back taxi this for a little bit for a beautiful view. Man, that thing is good. You want to get some low shots there, camera crew? I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we have been filming with the lapel mics today. We filmed this uh, radio setup with the lapel mics. And we filmed this flight with the lapel mics. We also filmed the unsuccessful crash on the 4S 3200 that will follow at the very end. We'll have the Maiden in there as well. The Maiden was crazy. Honestly, I'm not sure if the flight modes are changing when I flip my flight modes. That looks so good. Okay, so throttle cuts on. Let's go back up to the garage. We're gonna go ahead and switch to a 2200 4S and be right back. It's marked right here. That's where the 3200 4S goes. That's where the 2200 4S goes. Can you give them a better vertical shot of that? So with that flight, if you guys weren't already aware, you can plug in your, your main lead and you'll get your voltages. Okay, so point, so we got 26% left. It takes a second for it to actually relax into the correct number. See what's going on there? So when you plug in your balance lead, you're gonna get a more accurate number but you can plug in just the discharge lead and the smart connection will show you what you got. So we're gonna fly this time on a 2200 4S coming in at 90% charge, 98% charge. So that's good. And uh, this flight time is gonna stay the same actually. Uh, you'll be surprised what you can get away with on these packs. I'm not gonna push it though. I mean, I'm gonna be landing at the timer. Because we, we probably, and you got to remember, we back taxied all the way up the driveway, right? Or at least a good chunk Around of the way. Around the end, yeah. A little bit. So what we're going to do is we'll set this out so we don't have to back taxi. Okay. That sucker's in there nice and tight. Leave this in a flat, stable configuration when you plug it in if you're using this AR637T. Or any stabilizer for that matter. Takes a second for it to initiate, just like if it was having safe on. And just to be clear, you can put safe on this configuration. So let's show people real quick. So we're in flight mode one, there's, this is two and three, okay? So technically that'll increase the gains. And then this should also Forward programming. Can you see? Here, how about now? I'm just having a hard time focus. Yeah. Okay, so gyro gains. You gotta pay attention. AS3X. The priority is like this, okay? The heading is not anything right there and the gains are as such. So 
So I feel like yaw. Well, it's so weird because I thought I had that to where it would switch when I moved the buttons. But it's in gain sensitivity plus one or times one. Okay. That's so weird. I swear that that was set to one of these other switches. See, it says flight mode three. Did I change where that was set? I think so. F mode set up. It's on the flight mode channel. Is the, what? Okay. So now you can see flight mode one, two, three. There we go. So AS3X settings, gains, see that? So now they'll change respectively. So now we walk out. I should be able to, whoops, go to the AS3X gains. And then I can see I don't know what that one's tied to. See, that's B. So what's B doing? Go to monitor. Did my Vario come back on? I didn't hear it that time. Whoops. It's under telemetry. No, yeah, it's empty, good. Because that's super annoying. You'll hear that in the Maiden. I always want to go to monitor. There's monitor. See, it's not. It's changing flight mode. See that? Mm -hmm. So those are different flight modes. Sorry, guys. This is new for me. Where the heck is flight mode, hun? Was that under AS3X or? Yeah, I think it's in the forward programming. Oh, it is? I think so. No, it was on AS3X gains. Oh. See how it says imp input? Isn't this what I use? No, because that's what I use for my master gain. Master gain. But see, it says FM switch is B. The channel, I don't know, I'll just put it up to five. There we go. So now I can make master trim adjustments, okay? So you can see this will give me my master trim adjustments, and then this will change between the three modes, excuse me, between the three modes and between the three modes. Goodness gracious. There's a lot to keep straight on this new system. Okay, so we have the uh, 4S2200, and we're gonna walk out to the runway so we don't waste any on back taxi. All right, 2200 4S this time, back further. Throttle cuts off. Look at that gorgeous thing. Gear up. Backing off the throttle. Man, that thing looks so gorgeous. There's plenty of power to do more than I'm doing. I'm just trying to make it look scale. I'm being really, really delicate on the power now to show you how slow it can go. Man, that gain, uh, 1X gain has made a huge improvement, guys. I'm trying to be way more conservative on my battery life this time. I did clear my timer, by the way, hon. That's about 50% throttle there. There's about 70 on the turn just to stay in the air safely. I'm trying to change my flight mode to see if it does anything. It doesn't really seem to make a big impact. I think it's because I have it tied to the roller. That would hypothetically turn it up. I don't feel like it did much of anything if it did. Mostly out of the throttle, just avoiding that sign.
Okay, so we'll see if this tightens it up at all. It doesn't seem to do much of anything there. Into the throttle hard there. There's about 50% on the stabilization there. doesn't feel like I have a whole lot of it. This is my middle expo setting. As you can see, she's glorious looking. Just gorgeous. See, she's wiggling a lot on that roll axis. I think I might do a mix on for my for my rudder on the ailerons. Okay, we'll do a nice slow pass here. Got a little bit of wind from our back. Looks so good going down the runway. See that flag at the end of the strip there? Okay, there's our zero minutes my timer did not go off that's always really not cool gear coming down been flying way more conservative thank goodness because i did not hear my timer she still wants to flare look at that guys that was better had a little bit of wind from our right side, so I was being super conservative about getting it down. We'll go ahead and taxi back fairly quick. Actually neutral on the elevator here, just a little bit of downward force on the nose so it doesn't try to pop up on me. I feel like the CG is spot on on this plane. It just does exactly what you want it to. I would say it's flying good right now. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong on my flight modes. Okay, so my throttle cut's on. I'm gonna go into, can you see that at all or am I? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so dual rates and expo. Oh, look at that, they're gone. <laughs> nice, not good. So they're gone. So I'm setting that to switch F. Oops. I'm gonna set one to, to 10. What the heck? This is very weird. So we'll set that to 10. We'll set the heck is going on here? That is so weird. You see that? Mm -mm. Okay. See that says curve? There we go. There's 10. What is going on with this? This is so weird. I've never had this happen before. Okay, so then I'll set that to like 20, and I'll set zero to five. Did you see what happened on the aileron, aileron cell? Rudder, set that to F, set that to 10, and then set that to 20, and then set that to five. Okay, and go back to ailerons. One will set to five. Two will, I don't understand that at all. See how it's inhibited? Not supposed to be inhibited. Mm -hmm. There's 10. Okay. OK, 
Okay, good. I've never had to do that before. Probably a firmware glitch, but now it's working. Okay, so we've got that all done. While I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go to system setup. Yes, disconnect RF, and I'm gonna transfer SD card. I'm gonna scroll over to export all models. Export. So I'm transferring that into the SD card because I don't want that to change and I have the variable off now too. So when you have a weird thing like that happen, you wanna go in and fix it and then save it. So we'll see you at the garage next. Okay, go ahead, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, we're at 20%. That's as from the balance charge lead on this 4S 2200. We're on a three minute flight time with only limited back taxi. So from the discharge lead, it takes a second to come up with the full amount. See, that seems to have reported a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. So this is still a little bit warm, so I'm not gonna start it, but we're gonna plug this in here. All right, so we're gonna try one more flight on 3S. Okay, so when I was in flight, I was switching between my modes. You have to warn me if you can see that with the glare. Okay. So you see how it's changing now? The gain is 30, then it's 50, then it's 80. I still don't know how that works out with this knob being attached to the master gain as well. So what I'm trying to do, can you see? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get it so I don't have to play with the trimmer while I'm flying. So this would trim more gain, this would trim less gain, this would trim more or less. So I just have three settings. So this would be like the most, excuse me, I actually want that to be the other way around. I want that to be kind of like 80. And then I want this one to be 50 and I want this one to be 30. My rationale behind that, actually, you know what? I'm sorry, I had it right before because that would be like simulating my flap mode. So we'll set this to 30. Okay, so basically that's gonna act like it would if I had flaps on, okay? The regular flight mode, take off flaps, landing flaps, okay? So you can see how the trimmer moves when I do that. Well, that's weird, then it disappeared. That's because now I'm in the trimmer display, okay? Minus 42, zero, okay? And then when you go over to your monitor, you can actually see the monitor will show what channel it's on. So that's on auxiliary five. Then C is on auxiliary four, D is not assigned anything, and then this one's assigned to two, but I don't know why that is. And then this one is assigned to three. So none of them are, are, are overlapping and that's the key. But you can still use that master gain control if you need it. The master gain control is the only one I know of right now that's actually doing anything. Okay. What I want to, what I want to happen is I want to be able to turn up the gain just a little bit more when needed. Mm -hmm. So if you go into the forward programming or yeah, see, I don't see it because I don't think you have to be actually plugged in. Because when you're forward programming, you're actually programming the plane mm. via the remote. So when you see that, that's what it is. So now the other thing too is my alarm didn't go off. That's right. So I'm going to go oh, yeah. into timer, one out, tone and vibrate. Okay. That's weird. So it's going to start counting down. I just don't understand why that wouldn't go off. We'll have to listen to the video again, but I didn't. I'm going to set it to one minute and then start it. Okay. So it started. We'll just let that run for a minute while I get this. So this is a 3S smart pack. It's 3,200 milliamps, 30C. My rationale behind flying on a 3S is first of all, I feel like the power that I'm using to fly is more than I need to fly. It's definitely, I would not start flying on a 3S. I would start getting set up done with, a, with a, a 4S so you have that power to get out of trouble. But I wanna know if this thing will handle a 4S, or excuse me, a 3S 
and still kind of get the job done. So I'm going to go kind of in the middle of these two packs. You see, I've got the markings there. Hun, can I see? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to pull this in tight as though I've got it right, and then we'll test it for CG. CG bumps are here and here. So we're just listening for beeping, alarming. No, the timer just ran out. Okay, so the alarm is not working. Very weird and not good. No. So I'm gonna go to the timer and I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna inhibit the alarm and then I'm gonna turn it back on to tone and vibrate. And I'm gonna hit next, clear timer. I don't really understand. Oh, that's the button. Okay, countdown events, every minute down is a tone. One minute or every minute down, 10 second expiration is tone vibrate. See that, that's what it is. There's more. Start time. Okay. So now it should go. So it starts. Now this might be a little bit confusing to the firmware because we're actually, we're doing two things. We're supposed to be toning at one minute and we have the timer set to one minute. So we'll see if that's going to work. And obviously on 3S, we have the added danger, the added risk of not having enough power to get out of trouble. So we're gonna have to fly a little bit more conservative on this flight. Generally, as a rule, it's not a good idea to make a bunch of adjustments. We're at 30 seconds on our timer. I think we just never set up the rest of the menu because we updated the firmware, remember? Oh. Say so we're actually a little bit tail heavy, so we gotta go forward just a hair. I would be okay with just a hair more tail heaviness for flare reasons, okay? Okay. Okay, there it went. Tone and vibrate was true. Right at zero. At zero, good. So guys, it wasn't a firmware issue, it was that I never actually set up all the new firmware answers, which means that on all my other planes, I'm gonna have to be careful to check on that. Mm. Oh yeah, that's, that's crazy. Good. It's in the same spot as the 2200. Right spot on for center of gravity. Let's show the people at home if they couldn't tell from looking. We're just a little bit in, in front of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this down and tighten that strap a little bit. Oh gosh. That's one thing about this plane I've learned is that moving that strap was the best thing we could have ever done. Yeah. Cause it, it would have been ridiculous. It's possible to get to. Well, it would have been really not fun to work with. See, that's the, oh, dang it. I just broke that balsa wood. You see that balsa wood? Yep. I broke it, but the, the strap is still gonna be effective. It's just, that is so annoying. That was the one that I was hearing crack at mm -hmm. the beginning. You remember? Yep. When we were trying to get it removed. What a mess. Get it moved. Okay, we're gonna pause it and, and glue that and we'll come right back. All right, so this is how we fix that problem. We put five toothpicks in and just glued them in with CA so it'll be stronger than it was before. I just hope that we didn't get, yeah, good. We didn't get CA in it. See, that'll be equally as strong, which is not very strong to begin with. But generally, see the problem is with this type, this type of uh, fixture is that when you do use this type of fixture, you have to necessarily put pressure on the frame below. Like there's, there's no way to get around that. Mm -hmm. So if you're hoping to accomplish good results and you don't want your battery to slip, which you don't want your battery to change positions in this plane, I'm just warning you, which is generally true for any plane. The other thing you can do is sometimes it does help to set the battery vertical and that makes it a little bit easier to get a better tie down point. The only problem is it can sometimes fall over on you. Okay. Cause you can get the same center of gravity. It just, you know, you've got an easier bite point. Okay. 
So it just kind of depends on where you want to put it. You see my, my wood is breaking over here too. So we got to put a dripple glue on that. So we'll pause and do that. All right, so we're on 3S 3200 uh, Smart Pack 30C. Throttle cuts off. We have our timer set to three minutes and fixed. So it's going to go off this time. It flies. But just barely. Very power starved. That's full throttle the whole time too. So we're gonna land it if we can get it to land. Don't like flying at 100% throttle all the time. Backing off the throttle, we're gonna land it right now, right here. So that answers your question, guys. 4S is mandatory. So the answer to the age old question is no. 3S is not good. Very underpowered, not confident at all in the plane's capability to handle that flight. If there were any adverse um, performance tendencies, like for instance, you had a big gust of wind that the AS3X could not overwhelm, yeah. you'd be screwed. Yep. You see how it's crabbing? Yep. What is that they say about size matters? I don't know, what do they say? <laughs> I think it matters on this. Throttle cuts on. Now, I think I did notice something though. What? I think I might've got that flight mode thing figured out. Cause all look, right. listen, gains all the way up. Okay, you hear it? You hear it? I can't, I can't tell the difference. I can't, I can't tell a difference in audible feedback from the servo, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be enough to make an actual difference in flight performance. So we'll see. For now, guys, this thing is a gorgeous plane. Uh, we'll probably end on this because it was really disappointing. And who wants to end on a high note, right? <laughs> Wait, we'll end on the crash. So if you're still watching, gold star for you. By the way, wonderful plane, lots of details. If you get this plane, it is a true plug and fly. It is not a bind and fly or even close to it. Um, the good news is it's beautiful. By the way, a little bit of damage on the strike there. So, but I was just happy to get it down. And by the way, there is a pretty good amount of breeze coming down and a little bit of thermal from the road. So you may notice the ground effect was exaggerated. With this sun out, it is baking the ground. There's our three minute timer right. tone and vibrate. So it worked. Good. All right, guys, without further ado, you know where to find all your favorite RC reviews, the longest on YouTube. Size does matter. Come back for more. Okay, guys, so we're going to go into the forward programming and show you what we changed from the Maiden. Not sure what order you're seeing this. Forward programming. Let it load. Go to gyro settings. AS3S settings. AS3X settings, we changed it down to 1X. We were at four at the beginning. I tried it on two, it was an improvement, and one hopefully will be best. The gains are gonna be all the way up. We're gonna test those gains right now. The easiest way to test your AS3X, it's the same way you test the lemon, is you basically, you have to give a little bit of throttle on AS3X, okay? You can hear it moving. I'm gonna turn the gains all the way up. You'll notice in 1X, you can't see what direction it's moving. I've already tested the direction of travel, so I know it's right. I just don't know if the intensity is enough. So we're gonna find out right now. This is the 4S 3200 milliamp pack, okay? Where? I want you right there. Okay. Okay.
Film. I am. Okay. So. All right. So you guys saw what I did there? I stalled the airplane in the takeoff because this thing will let you pull up more than you should be allowed to do. So, yeah, I was gonna say, I try to get the stuff out. Looks like these LEDs popped out. Okay, so we're gonna need a couple of minutes to glue stuff back together and try to straighten this landing gear. We'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna re-secure these lamp, uh, LEDs real quick. Well, it's super frustrating when you get a crappy beginning to a story like this. I've already flown it successfully. And I'm just using a little teeny bit of CA. It shouldn't really be that super critical, to be honest. If you could go from the other side, you could actually see what's happening, maybe. Okay, so just a little teeny bit of CA. Well, that is super annoying, but at the same time, it fared well in the accident. I just don't understand. Sometimes it's like you know better and then you do exactly what you know not to do. It's weird. Okay, so that's down. So now I'm just gonna, just gonna do a little teeny bit around the bottom so that it's held tight. Like this, just gonna spread that out. Now these LEDs, they are somewhat omnidirectional, but you see what I'm doing? I'm just getting a little teeny bit of CA on the tip of it and spreading it around. And you'll be amazed how big of a difference that makes for spreading the light out because instead of having a smooth surface, it'll be a little teeny bit of bumpiness, especially on the strobes. It'll be more omnidirectional. So we're gonna do that real quick on both of these. Um, last night I was flying, or this wasn't last night, it was two nights ago. I was flying for my True Maiden and it was dark and the tail light pretty much saved the plane because I could tell where I was, but the strobe frequency is lower to be more scale. And I'll tell you what, that kind of was frustrating because it made it like, there was too much refresh time between when I could see and when I couldn't. And that was my only concern. So this discolors the paint very slightly. So you'll just want to be aware of that. It's not, I don't think it's a deal breaker by any means, but it is what it is. So now that we have that done, we just verify control surfaces still tight. Okay. Still good. Still good. Obviously, we can't test the retracts yet because we have the noses, nose gears bent. So that's going to be our next focus. We had just one little teeny scratch there. So my camera crew is going to get a blue marker for me while I get this thing glued back in. No, that's actually it doesn't even need glued back in. It just got kind of pushed back. Um, the blue marker... So there's, there's a couple of different trains of thought on straightening stuff like this. My hope is I can just bend it. And if it breaks, then I'll have to get more aggressive with it. Show them that. See this? You can see that flat spot. There's a weak point on these landing gear where they have the, the piece bites down on it, but it's pretty soft metal. If it bent back, it'll bend forward. It's just probably not gonna bend forward very nice. It's a little bit scary. 
Um, I have to push down to keep the foam attached to the actual mechanism. I'm pushing the spring down. So that just broke. Okay, so time for screwdrivers and stuff, I guess. So we're undoing these three screws here. Okay, like this. And we're gonna see how this thing lifts out. Oh, there's still, okay, there we go. Okay, then we're gonna need to pop this off. So I'm gonna support it with my finger and then try to undo the the clevis, which I have undone now. You'll notice that I have my radio system on. That's to control things. These screws are gonna need to get picked out, so I'm gonna grab some needle nose pliers. We can pick those up. Once we get the screws out, we're gonna basically, um, we're gonna establish whether or not the retract is like garbage or if I can attach onto it still. My guess is the ladder, which is why I'm going through this trouble. It doesn't really change anything if it's broken, then we gotta find a suitable replacement. Which, I mean, I've got a million different nose gear retracts actually, if I really get right down to it. So this is attached here, so I'm gonna loosen this so I can undo this. That's a set screw there. Okay, then the last part is gonna be, of course, taking this thing out, which is also threaded in. Okay, so we're gonna undo this, this little angle bracket, and then it lets go of the retract assembly. You see this piece of steel here? That's the part that's gonna dictate whether or not we can salvage this. So, um, before I get in too deep, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the retract assembly. The retract assembly, of course, if it doesn't move, then that answers our question too. So just looking at the gear door, <clears throat> I'm gonna flip this around just so I don't damage anything. Obviously our steerable uh, nose gear is still working. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to fix that. The trouble is on this application is, you can get a close up look at this oleo now, which is kind of cool. There's no set there. Take that set out, the whole thing slides out to get in and work on it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip over the plane. Um, I touched up this one little blue spot here off camera. You can see where it drags. It likes to drag right there. Mm -hmm. So if you guys decide to put a little piece of plastic on it or something of the sort, that would probably not be a bad call. So now all I'm doing is I'm just trying to figure out a way to support this so I'm not laying on the gear door because they're not very strong. That's probably good enough. I got most of the center of gravity back. So now the other thing I got to do is I got to figure out um, I I see which wire, can you even see what I'm doing in there? If you can't see what I'm doing, you're gonna have to go around my right. We're gonna get some side cutters and we're gonna cut the wires apart from one another. I'll pull this forward. So this needs to get cut carefully. Okay. When you cut a zip tie like this, guys, you gotta be real careful you don't catch the wire in there because you'll have a crushing effect on the wire. We'll end up shorting that stuff out. You gotta be very aware that that's a possibility. So you notice I still have everything plugged in. That's all by 
I'm doing that on purpose because I want to be able to actuate the controls and I don't want to have this center of gravity get thrown too bad. You see the battery slipped too, which is fine. It doesn't really, once you've crashed, it's too late anyway. That's where you got to be careful because when you do that, you can get in there and really crush those wires. Okay. And this is what I was talking about in the radio setup, you know, where you don't want to have to fight this stuff later. There's one more zip tie, but I can't get there because the camera is blocking my access. I'm cutting the, the head zip ties, which usually lets you get the wires out without crushing or compromising the, the wires. Mm, this one's, it looks like this one that's got the extension cord. No, it's a direct connection all the way to the back. So I'm just pulling that plug out for just that one right now. Okay, so it's unplugged from the retract mechanism. This is where you gotta be a little bit careful about where you put your zip ties. I probably put this last zip tie in here. It was not absolutely necessary, but if I wouldn't have crashed, it would have been nice. Okay, so just sliding this back toward me. I'm gonna put this so that the tip is between two wires. Yep. Ah, oh, dang it. I didn't really mean for that to fall into the plane, but it did. So now we did all that just so we can go, go ahead and flip it over. We're gonna have to get those little remnants. Can you throw those behind you there? Mm -hmm. Give me a second. See, this thing got a little bit stressed, but it's not broken. The other side, the same. It's one of those things where, you know, when you have a crash, you're just kind of happy to not lose the plane completely. See, now that I've got that slack, I can pull that most of the way out, but I don't want to have to feed it all the way back through. So we'll just go with what we can. Got some bug guts in there now. That's always fun. So you see how that falls down and then goes back up? See that guys? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that. I'm probably just gonna have to pull this thing out and then I can flip the plane over and get it in a safe configuration somewhere. That forward antenna on the bottom is a real pain. Okay, so that plane can sit there now. Okay, so what do we have here? We have the retract assembly. We've got the nose, nose gear, the bogey itself. We've got this little thingy. And you'll see when you spin this, it's supposed to be threaded, so it's supposed to feed in there, which it is, okay? So that's supposed to bite, okay? So that'll actually go like this. So you want to keep stuff in the same orientation as close as you can to what it was when you crashed. You can get it back together easy. And then obviously uh, keep your broken components too so that you can figure out what size things are. Okay. So now we need to open up this assembly, which is going to take a little bit of effort. Um, while I undo these four screws, my camera crew is going to pause and grab us a piece of white paper. Okay, so the white piece of paper is just so that you can see what's going on better. So those four screws come out. Take note of the fact that there are different lengths. See, this one's longer than that, which is not uncommon in these little servo, serverless retracts. You got three long ones and one short one. So the one short one goes here. Once you get that undone, oh, you gotta still undo these two from the mount. And I recommend if you have to take these apart and you're not 100% sure, mark stuff as you go. So like I'm making a squiggle so I can remember what direction things are, okay? So I've got the squiggle. I'll know when I lay them in orientation, okay? 
Whenever you take apart a machine for the first time and you need to remember where things go, do it in a very organized fashion, meaning as you take things apart, lay screws and piles um, of like parts. It'll make your life easier. I mean, you'll be able to figure it out if you spend a bunch of time, but like for me, I don't have the luxury of spending a lot of time. <laughs> that was a hilarious joke for anybody who's seen this channel before. Okay, so here's the motor assembly right here, and then this is the case. So we're gonna open it up. You can see what it looks like inside of here. I gotta be careful to try to keep the motor on this side. There's gonna be a control circuit in there too. You see that one wire is what I gotta be careful about. You see the gears? So it's a metal gear assembly, not uncommon. So we can carefully lay that down. And then you see what I'm looking for there? I'm looking at this cam. I have to pull it out. Try not to screw up anything else if you can. And then once you get that cam apart, then you can look, look at getting this thing pulled out, which I'm unsure if that thing is designed to come out or not. I mean, if it's in there, they had to get it in there somehow. It's not like they cast it around that piece. Okay. So now you can see what's going on here. So this cam, while I'm, while I'm looking for a suitable replacement, I'm going to lay this cam back in there, okay? So you can see this. There's a snap ring that holds the tail on. Okay, so this is where that, that broke, of course. Not sure which direction it was when it broke. Looks like it was probably like that. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, it was probably, it's probably the other way. It's probably like this. So if, if you were motivated, you could, um, this is actually the front. So I'm just gonna make like an F or something, just like F, F, okay. That'll wipe off with just a little bit of pressure. So now what I need to do is I need to go and do a little bit of searching and the camera crew is going to wait for me to come back, I guess. Okay, so basically I found this uh, set of Dynam retracts that I had. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not gonna use the retracts because the assembly is still working good. I'm basically just gonna steal the part so you can see the shaft size is um, really, really close. So I'm hoping it's exact and we'll find out here in a minute. I mean, a lot of these Chinese models have the same parts and this happened to be a uh, the same size here, and it's actually a slightly superior mechanism, but what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and just use the existing mechanism, and then I will, oh, dang it. I'll have to find a different size Allen wrench for that, but basically I'm gonna tear this apart just like we did that, and then we can interchange that one shaft. Um, obviously I'm gonna have to cut this at the appropriate length and then probably mill out a flat spot on it so that I can catch my set screws. You don't have to do that, but it's better if you do, you'll get a more positive seat and you'll have a lot better pressure so that you're not veering off to the left as you're running down the highway, trying to get up to speed or the runway rather. The reason I show you guys this is because to be honest with you, most of you have crashed a plane a time or two and this one's really a, a bummer, but it's actually, I mean, if you're gonna have a crash, this is probably about as minimal a damage as you can have. Um, I, I still haven't decided. I'll have to review the flight footage, but I'm pretty sure it was just me pulling up too early, which induced a bit of a roll tendency to the right. And I just didn't have enough time to respond. So that's part of the reason why I was saying on 4S, we're gonna be a lot safer because you've got more power, more um, power to spare. Oh, I gotta take the bottom off too. Same thing as, and remember this is just a spare part, so I don't really care quite as much, but I do still care because you never know when you're gonna need your spare part to actually replace another spare part. And typically when you have a retract fail, it breaks the retract too. But look how sturdy that mechanism is in there. I mean, that thing is actually pretty well built. A lot of times the retracts, the, the mechanism holds up well, 
and what breaks is the the electronics there's some sort of a failure in the electronics okay so this one here we're just going to split it in half um, did I miss a screw feels like it's not wanting to split very good there I might have had it like still turned in a little bit at the end there we go these things almost never split apart easy because your motor always wants to pull to the wrong side I've only opened up a few retracts but this is why you can't just use a regular, you know, like servo connection because there's a limit switch on either end. I don't know if you guys can make that out, but there's a limit switch here and a limit switch there. So it's a different type of circuit. It starts it and it runs across and then stops. So the pulse width modulation just activates the circuit and it says, I want you to go to this side or I want you to go to that side. So that's why you can't stop gear halfway. Okay, so you see this is plastic. That's part of the reason why Dynam has a bad reputation for landing gear and it's got a nice snap ring on there too. So this is where the rubber meets the road. Now I could just use this landing gear, nose gear um, bogey, but I don't know that I really care to do that. Oh, come on now, get off of there. Sorry, I'm, I'm probably blocking your view, but this thing's gonna shoot across the room, I can guarantee that when I do finally get it off of there. And these snap rings are a pain because there's no other real good way to do it that I've found. You just kind of got to dig in there and pull it out. This one just happens to be slipped down in almost an inaccessible position. And I can't push it up any higher. I could try to undo this. We'll pause it and get the right tool and come right back. So this happened to be a 1 16th of an inch. That was a 1.5 millimeter. So hopefully this isn't um, gonna be an imperial measurement here. If it is, then we'll just have to use this assembly instead. So once we loosen that, and again, this is kind of hyper-specific to my application. I'm gonna back this off a little bit. And then that should let us slide this up or down. See, it's already milled, which is good. So once we slide that, then we can get at the snap ring a lot easier. That's what I was hoping for. And then I can just grab one side of the shaft and pop that off, hopefully. Go to the flat spot so I don't put a bunch of teeth marks in this. Oh, these snap rings are such a pain. I hate snap rings. Okay, got it off of there at least. So now that looks like it might be a little bit bigger, unfortunately. That's making me a little bit nervous now all of a sudden. But if it is bigger, there's a way to fix that. Or not fix, but adjust to accommodate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so it goes in there. <clears throat> So guys, what you're hearing is not COVID. I was taking hay off our property yesterday. So if you've ever run hay, it's uh, quite the dusty operation. That's why my eyes are puffy too, you see? Mm -hmm. So that'll, that'll, defi that'll definitely fit. So now the question becomes, will this fit on there? It does, that's good. And then will this fit over, which I believe it will as well. If everything else fits, this will fit too. See that just needs to be backed off half a turn or whatever. Oh yeah, it goes. Yep, that'll go, that's good. So now I have to do a, a little bit of dry fitting just to make sure we get this right. Were you gonna say something camera crew? So now I need to figure out how long to cut this at. So my measurement is this, guys. Basically, I need this to be that long. That's how long I need it, in fact. So I don't want to cut it too short, and I don't want to cut it super long, because if I cut it super long, it's useless. If I cut it, or excuse me, if I cut it super long, it's okay, but it'll, it'll give problems with closure. If I cut it too short, then it's going to be garbage. And you see there's a flat spot here. So I'm just gonna color that in. There's a flat spot there. And then this is the cut point. I'm just gonna go 
ever so slightly farther out. And I don't know if the people can see that at home. Give them a shot from right above. All I did was just line it up and I just showed the flat spot there and then I showed the cut point. So now the next thing I got to do is actually cut this, which this is one of those times where <clears throat> you don't typically do this sort of thing on your kitchen counter, but we're going to do it today because I want to get this thing done. We just happen to have perfect weather conditions for this. Well, I mean, perfect as in it's still hot, but very good. Last night it was so frustrating because it was like perfect conditions and I so badly wanted to film um, this video for you all, but it just didn't work out because my camera crew was busy taking care of kid things and I was busy taking care of getting the hay off the property because we've had a chance of rain every day this week and yet it's only rained a couple of times mm -hmm. real briefly, which is acceptable for, for hay, you have to let it dry out before you can bale it or it will catch on fire. And we've also been working through kind of taking bugs out of that machine too. So it's been just a lot on our plate the last few weeks. Very long days. Even on vacation. Our vacations are not much vacation anymore. Yeah, not the word for it. Oops, see that screw didn't penetrate so I'm just getting all my practice out of the way on this one because it's not the one that's going in the Boeing. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Brian, why are you including this in video? And I'm thinking to myself kind of the same thing. I wouldn't have to have this in the video because this is just putting together the crappy Dynam retract. But you know what's gonna happen is I'll need this retract for another plane now. And when I need it, I'll have it. And that is the moral of my life is to keep every piece of garbage that you ever produce so that when you move, you have to pay college kids to come pick it up for seven or eight hundred dollars. Isn't that about what we had to do with the old house? I don't think it was that much, was it? It wasn't seven. But we did pay people to come pick up garbage. <laughs> we had to pay people to pick up garbage. And the people that we sold our house to were super nice and they let us have like an extra three days. To leave all our garbage in their yard. Well, no, they came and picked it up, but um, <clears throat> but still, that was scary. That was a very scary couple of days. And if you haven't watched it, I literally showed the car loads and truck loads of airplanes that we had to move. <clears throat> so it was, um, it was quite comical. Esteban was cameo in that. It was great. So we're going to actually do this real quick. Um, obviously, we'll be cleaning our counters when we're done. Like I said, I normally don't do this on my countertop or on my wife's countertop, however you want to look at that, but I am today. <clears throat> so I'm just going to cut this here. I want to put this behind, catch some of the debris that shoots off. Actually, I'll, I'll do this part first. I'm just milling a flat. It doesn't need to be like super deep. So that flat is only on one side. Now let's just corroborate. Looks like this is only on, uh, it's flat on both sides on this one. So we need to actually do both sides too. I'm gonna do a little teeny bit more. Flat. 
making my mark on the other side. Okay, so I got my mark there. Okay, so we got that nice and flat. <clears throat> Why do you keep moving away from it? See that? So it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be flat. <clears throat> so now we're gonna cut it. It's getting a little bit toasty, so. In order to protect my fingers, I'll go ahead and hold it with another tool. I'm gonna hold it well beyond so that I don't mar the finish. Cause this thing needs to be pretty smooth. You'll notice I'm cutting pretty slow. That's all intentional. <clears throat> it's probably getting pretty toasty. So I'm gonna just rotate my grip so I have more spinning control. Now that's flat, it's gonna be a little hot, so I'll set it on the paper. <clears throat> that's what I was concerned about getting all over the counter there, camera crew. So now I'm gonna clean up this edge just a little bit because it's gotta feed through. Flattening it. Okay. I'm just going to work the edge. <clears throat> okay, so we got that. Okay. So now we just want to double check that we're smooth on the outside. Got a little bit of rough spot there. So I need to try to touch that just a little teeny bit. You know what I need to get that? Uh, I need an X-Acto knife. Would you, you um, get it? 
Yeah, would you mind? That'd be awesome. I'm gonna unplug this. So basically what we've got here is um, <clears throat> the shaft that will go back in and get everything reattached. You know, it's actually going in okay. I think it might be okay without, but this is a very sharp blade. We just replaced it here the other day. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just taking off that little burr. I'm just deep burring the edge. Because the problem is if you have a burr on there, it may not feed all the way through properly. Let's see. You could use another material for this if you wanted to, but it's just the snap ring. Getting a snap ring slot like that grooved would be very difficult. I mean, I'm not saying impossible. It would not be impossible at all. I could do it given enough time. We're going to want to clean that good when we're done. <laughs> See? No, your garbage is Oh, sorry. So now the next thing is to um, very painstakingly exactly rebuild this. So we're going to use the snap ring that came with this one if it fits. Okay, so I can pick this back up and out. It was nice to work on this with the retract out. Would have been a little harder to do it the other direction. Okay, so I can actually put the snap ring on first. <clears throat> Sorry about all the throat clearing, guys. That's really annoying, I'm sure. We've been doing the um, lapel mics this morning. We were thinking this was gonna be a short little thing. Ooh, you see that? Look, it doesn't seat down in there. See, there's like a recess that's supposed to go in. Mm -hmm. Let's see if this one goes in the recess. I doubt it does, it pr probably doesn't. It's pretty close, but I don't think it would even go in the recess. Hmm, that's a tough call. I think it would be better if we tried the other one, if it'll go on, that'd be nice. Problem is these snap rings, you can only get them on and off a few times before they break. Guys, I'm just holding that area that we thinned out. Oh, that hurts. Just trying to get the stupid snap ring off. Okay, we'll try this one, see if it goes. I doubt it will, but if it does, that would give me a little bit of peace of mind. You know, on these airplanes, if you haven't figured out, the devil is truly in the details. You know, we spent what, like over an hour fixing this landing gear, mm -hmm. only to screw it up by a mistake I made, <clears throat> which is too bad. Yeah, it did go on, so. But I think it probably is a little bit annoyed with life right now. Okay, so that went through. Yeah, see, it's a little bit bigger. See that? That's mm -hmm. stretched out a little bit more. I think we'll be okay. I just hope we're not too short now. That would really, really, really suck. But if it's the case, then I just have to mill that bottom. <clears throat> Again, sorry about all the clearing, guys. It's life in the big city, I guess, today. So now, this goes in here, whatever direction we want it to be. Then this goes down over the top of it. And actually, we can reassemble the landing gear at this point. Uh, retract, the serverless retract. This is where I gotta be real careful I don't lose any of my gear sets. Usually that's the cue for the gear set to fall out, but evidently it wasn't paying hey, attention at that moment. Wasn't. Okay. See that? Okay, so now I can pull this stuff over. <sighs> this video is kind of like marrying me. It's more than you bargained for. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Mm -hmm. Way more in every way, every good way, <laughs> no bad ways. <laughs> Awesome, it's another Brian Phillips repair video. Wait, I thought this was a maiden. Well. We're gonna still go at the end. <clears throat> you know what? I like your thinking. 
remember I told you we were gonna pause, <laughs> we'll stop the video. So guys, in, in case you didn't know, a little more, you know, inside baseball here. We um, we use F, FFmpeg to clip our videos together. That's the only editing we really do. I mean, once in a while we have like a really long video. <laughs> once in a while. Um, and we will take out chunks like, you know, maybe if somebody drops the F-bomb or something like that, which happens a lot. I mean, my camera crew is pretty, pretty vicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right. But then, uh, but what we'll do is we'll clip them together and we can put them in the inappropriate order. Mm -hmm. So like when we do a maiden, the maiden might be the last flight because the maiden, it's so frustrating as, as an RC pilot to put your worst foot forward. And people want to see time. your maiden fly because that's how they determine whether it's a piece of crap or not. Because like, you know, anybody can learn to fly a crappy plane, but if the maiden sucks, then that pretty much tells you, you know, it, it may not be a great plane. That might be what I expect to experience. And the thing is, on Maiden, you make all the mistakes you're going to make and more. Yeah. With the exception of, I mean, usually when I crash my planes, it's not on takeoff like that. That's, it's been a long time since I crashed on takeoff. That was just me getting irrationally faithful in the power system of this device. <laughs> it, it rolls way premature. So it's like, you got to be on it to know when this thing rolls. I felt like the stabilizer was probably about right though. And that was the other thing I was trying to establish in this maiden flight. This, not maiden, this is the fourth, the fourth flight where we crashed. And the fourth flight, guys, I'll be honest with you. If I didn't have those trees in that exact position, it, it would have, I think it was recoverable. I just didn't have quite enough room. If I would have, just been more patient with my role, it would have been fine. But maybe I need to expo up the elevator a little bit. I don't know. <clears throat> I usually ask my wife all the technical questions mm -hmm. since she is you the usually expert. usually have all the answers. Yeah. Okay, so this needs to go over to the, this side, okay? So once that's over on the left side, then I can kind of flip it um, I can sort of hold this in place with my fingers and just tighten this onto the shaft inside. So this is going to torque down. See, very stupid design because in order to bite that, you have to like turn it to a certain point. Well, you obviously can't leave it like this, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I don't know that there's really, I think what's supposed to happen is there's supposed to be a jam nut on here. Do they have a jam nut as part of this assembly? That'd be sweet if they did. I think they might actually. That would be totally cool. You know, I was actually thinking about welding this together. <laughs> I know, it would have never ever worked. But it would have been kind of funny if I did. Okay, so you see there's nuts on this. There's a jam nut. on this collar, okay? So I'm gonna just back this off and see if the threads just happen to be the same. That'd be like really lucky. I, I don't think they're the same. They're not even close. Big. This one might be the same though. It's weird that that Dynam track seems really nice, but then it has that plastic. I, I know, like why would you? that thing is called. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I'll just leave that there for now. So obviously in this case, that's gonna have to either be torqued like viciously way beyond and you're gonna rip out your threads. Mm -hmm. Or I need to flip this over. One flip. Mm. Which will do kind of the same thing. Do you know what I'm saying, camera girl? Yeah. So like if I go like this. Yeah, and then you're starting in a different In a spot. different position, okay? So I'm just finding the flat spot. I'm sorry, I can't really show that, guys. Oops, going backward. So once this gets tight, and as usual, after the crash, the plane will be better than it was before because we fixed all the stupid bugs that should have been fixed by somebody that we paid to fix it by designing it for us and selling it to us. So that's now tight, which is pretty awesome, actually. I'm happy with that. that I didn't expect that to come of this. Now, I noticed that this felt like it was stripping out, okay? It might have just been in my head. I don't know. It sure doesn't look like it's doing much. See, 
Does it look like it's doing anything? I don't think it's doing crap. <clears throat> what still, is it supposed to be doing? It's supposed to, it's supposed to jam this assembly. Mm. But it's, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <clears throat> Excuse me again, guys. So now you'll notice that this is at 90 degrees, right? But this is going to go on like that. So it's biting not a flat. Well, that's kind of annoying. I wish I would have noticed that first. Wait, wait, wait. What? This is the front. Yes. Right? Thank you. Okay. It, it isn't irrelevant, and you want to know why? I bet that's actually supposed to be up, because then when you get down, you can take it out and pull that off. Mm. So like when they're retracted, you can access it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> Delicious. People will be so glad to that we got the lapel mics. That, yeah. Now it's like an up close and personal throat <laughs> clearing. It's like come over here and stick your ear next to my throat. No thanks. I'm sure there's already I'm some good. weird people doing that. <laughs> They're like, oh boy, he's gonna clear his throat again. Here it comes. Gotta get ready. Gotta get ready. This is close enough for me. There it is. Okay, so that's plenty tight. Yes, yes, oh yeah, buddy. Look at that. I've never seen anything more beautiful in my life. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so we're gonna pause, get this crap cleaned up, and come right back. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta feed this wire back in, oh, yeah. which is gonna be a little bit awkward because we gotta go through here and then down the fuse. So this retract can sit on top of this blanket and it just goes through this slot like that. And then I'm gonna feed you're in the way with the wing. You gotta go to the other side, I'm sorry. You just, I'm just gonna feed it in. It's not like anything too fantastic. So once this gets fed in most of the way, it's, we're not even gonna worry about the wire yet. We're just gonna very carefully lay this down now. Okay. Once we get this most of the way down in, sorry, I'm not being very helpful camera crew, I know. No. So it's like a normal day. Mm -hmm. Then this thing needs to hook to that thing. Okay. This clevis needs to open up. Oh, for God's sake, get in there. You son of a gun, you. You poop eater. I'm sure they can't see anything right now. That's okay, they took it apart. Okay, clipped. So now that that's clipped, when I get ready to put this down, we gotta work that into my little mechanism that I modified. Do you remember the modifications, hon? I do. I was here. They might not have seen it yet. I gotta actually do that after I put it in. This is probably like watching an old person try to navigate windows. <laughs> like, what do I, what do I click? Yeah. <laughs> the icon, the little picture of the thing. No, the mouse. Oh yeah, I do like mice. Put your hand no, on that. no, no, twice. no. That's Fast. the thing that you no point faster. with. <laughs> Control C, Control C, Control C. You don't tell an old person. Control right click C, do you? and copy. No, Control C. <laughs> okay, but the thing that people don't understand is like, I've literally listened to Brian have that conversation with people, and he is surprisingly patient sometimes. <laughs> when they pay enough. <laughs> oh, is that my problem? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had customers that are of the older years just not very tech savvy yeah but they're they're uh patient sort of <laughs> so basically what we're doing is we're just getting this held in place i don't even i think i'm gonna be okay with my adjustments i kind of knew what it needed to look like roughly 
but I can tighten these after a, a minute too, because I can get the screwdriver down there. Oh, geez. Get through there. Oh, son of a gun, you. The good news is, with having repaired the landing gear before, like, you kind of knew what you were getting into. Mm. More yeah. than like the first time you've ever taken it, <clears throat> and it's broken. And you guys watching this video know exactly what you're getting into. So, you can't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, knowing what I knew now, I would still totally get this plane again. Because it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And to be honest with you, that wasn't that bad of a repair. I mean, that was a pretty bad crash. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. Oh, I gotta make sure there's not like, say, a blade of grass in the EDF. Oh, yeah. I just thought of that. I'm glad I thought of that now and not later. I just noticed a little chunk of something on this fan. It's actually on the fixed back part of it. Glad I noticed that. Okay, so you see my mechanism down here? This mechanism was designed to keep this down. Oh, for God's sake. Don't you even think about not going in. See this? Mm -hmm. See that? Now I gotta get, there it is. There you go. Now that's in the right spot. So now this is why you always have two pairs of forceps. Cause you're gonna need to hold something to brace it and then reach in and then do your sutures. Did you catch that camera crew? I just... The sutures. Honey, did you catch my hilarious joke? I know. Oh, That's all sorry. I think about forceps. No, I was talking about sutures. No. Sutures as in hilarious doctor joke. Okay, what? evidently okay, you, I didn't get it you didn't get it. Come on, you can do it. Why is that not wanting to lift for me? Oh, I popped out. Now I'm in. I don't know if you guys can see the frustration in my brain right now. I'm sure that your frustration is real watching me doing this and just hook it up, bro. I'm sorry. We may almost have to pause it just so I can elaborate on what's happening in lots of foul language. Okay. Okay. okay so I got it. Now I just got to try to get my forcep out because it's hanging on to everything. This is where it's really easy to just jank it right out and then end up breaking something. That's what you don't want to do at the end of a long repair because you'll be so annoyed. You'll be throwing stuff and, you know, punching the wall and doing all sorts of stupid things. <laughs> I, I don't do a lot of wall punching at least. No, luckily. <laughs> Otherwise, there'd be holes everywhere. <laughs> the hobby room would have no walls. No. The cats did pick a very opportune time to eat all at your feet. Show them what they're they doing. Are. Do you see that? All in the one bowl. Together. And then one of them always puts the front two paws in the bowl. This one. Get out of there. Yeah, she's got her paws in the bowl. Well, she always has to protect her food from the other two. She's kind of the runt, too, which is funny. Yeah. Because you would think that she would be. And then the boy. Is the one that's on top. The boy's the one that's on the left. He's got the darkest tail. We named him Pouncer. These are our outside cats, <laughs> which is kind of funny because it's, I don't think we're outside. Nope, no, it's in effect. Okay, hypothetically, we're done, but we have to test this now. And I have to do a small minor adjustment on the alignment. You see how it's favoring one side versus the other? Mm -hmm. Since there's so much slop in this, you have to kind of pick your battles. You know what I'm gonna do? It's not centered right now. The servo got moved when I was hooking it up. So I gotta, I gotta oh. let the radio system power up. This is my old, not smart pack. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna use this for just to test it because I don't wanna waste the 3200 4S that we're gonna be using for flying. Obviously we need to cycle the gear. So I'm just gonna leave that where it is. 
Um, this is about the same size as my smart pack. So like if you're going to use a Turnigy, you could, you could use this. This was actually a good battery. It was a good battery and now it's kind of like worn out. That's a 3S by the way. You'll notice it's about, it's actually bigger than my 4S smart pack. Crazy, right? Ooh, crap. It's not initiated yet. Whoops. Come on. You may initiate. The longest one ever. Yeah, what the heck? Did I didn't like hit the bind switch or something, did I? I don't think so. Did you throw it off though since you flipped it over? Possibly. I turned off the radio and turned it back on. We're gonna lay it. We're gonna, we gotta get the wire hooked up. We didn't ever hook up the wire. No, I didn't hit the button. So I didn't hit the bind switch or bind button. Okay, we're just gonna unplug this. We gotta get that wire pulled back through, camera crew. Oh yeah. Before we can do the next test, which is absolutely critical too. Um, okay, so this is gonna seem kind of ridiculous, but it's exactly what I'm gonna do to get the wire up here. I have to unplug this stupid thing because I'm gonna otherwise I'll end up breaking something. Yeah. You guys see it up there? There it goes. There's some zip ties heads that we mm. cut too, so we gotta try to shake and shake it. There's one. There's one. How many? Um, I think there was just the one. I think just one. Mm, there might have been two, but that's okay. If it doesn't come out like this, it ain't gonna come out. So that's okay. So we'll lay that back down. Nah, I expect I go the other way so I can reach the wires. I needed a bigger island, apparently. You can't get granite bigger. any bigger than this. No, I know. That's the thing is, I had somebody the other day saying that we should have done, um, instead of granite, we should have done quartz. Quartz, because like granite's out of style. Mm. I'm like, nope. Not really. I like my granite, thank you very much. Yeah, we picked granite because we wanted granite. Yep. We had a choice for quartz and we didn't want it here. We use quartz in our bathrooms. And I don't like it nearly as much as the granite. Okay. No, this stuff cut, it looks warmer and we liked it. And we were concerned about putting hot pads and stuff down or hot pans yeah. and this sort of thing down. So we we're very happy with the choice we made. We had granite in our old house and yeah. never had one problem. With never it. had a, a single problem. <clears throat> Just saying. <laughs> We have, you can't see it really on camera very good. We have one son that decided he was going to drop a box of food coloring. food coloring. Remind me again why he had access to that. I he curled. So anyway, my wonderful camera crew <laughs> and uh, wife decided that it would be a good idea to lay the box onto the counter instead of leaving it on the flooring, thinking that we had a somewhat impervious seal. Yeah. Not so much. No, he was playing with it on the bench and I took the box away from him and I didn't know the box had food coloring on it and I was throwing it to the sink and I missed the sink. Yeah. And that was like, what? I don't know, two, week, two weeks after we'd lived, moved in? Maybe? I was really, really happy that day. It's not a good day. But it's okay. After what, like 15 different remedies? It's still kind of there. So no matter what the granite guy tells you, it's never totally sealed. And if that would have been a white piece of quartz, we would have had a new piece of quartz. Yeah. And that'd have been probably a six thousand dollar mistake. Yeah. And then maybe not six. Maybe sure. Like five. Because this is the whole piece. Yeah, this is one slab. They they milled out for the sink, but then everything else. I, they obviously had to finish the edges. Right. But yeah. I like having the sink in the island because then I can see everybody, but sometimes it would be nice to have like one solid surface. 
You mean like when we have a giant airplane on it? Yes. Yeah. Surprisingly, that didn't come into the consideration until. It didn't actually. Yeah. As much as we do this stuff, you would think <laughs> it would have been a big factor. Okay, so the radio system, uh, my transmitter's on. Everything is in the correct condition. You're all hooked back up now. Yeah, we're hooked up now. So we just plugged it back into the sequencer right there. So that one. Hold still, right there. Right there. That's the one that we just plugged in. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the battery and see what happens. This obviously will be at the end of the, the video. So um, if you're still watching this, gold star for you. Hey, if you break your landing gear. Hey, start it up right away. It's because yeah. I had it flipped. Yeah. So if you try to initiate your plane in the wrong orientation, then it will not initiate because of the AS3X slash safe receiver. And when I say slash safe, you can put safe on this. There is an initial safe setup. I just didn't work through it, to be honest. I probably could. Okay, so just check servo, ailerons, elevator, rudder. Steerable nose gear is going the correct direction, which is opposite the rudder. But I do notice that it's not lined up straight, so we have to flip it over and do a little bit of an alignment adjustment. Um, as mentioned earlier, <clears throat> it is so funny because these cats, the kittens, are skittish at times, and then other times you can literally put your foot on them and they will stay put. <laughs> and I don't understand exactly what the trigger is because you see they're all sitting oh, under here. Waiting for you. They're waiting to get in the way. Yes. And it's funny because I'm, I'm a lifelong dog type of person. And but I'll tell you what, kittens are the cutest creatures ever. <laughs> I'm just not so sure about cats yet. But because you said though, you never had cats. Never had cats, especially not from kitten. Up. Right. If you get them from kitten, you can teach them to be as um, empathetic as you want them to be. Well, and they're used to like the kids carrying them around now and stuff. And like our little our kids are Our biggest daughter not... is like not very careful with them. No, our biggest daughter is very careful. No, but she's very, I mean, she's careful. Like she's not going to hurt them, but she's rough. She is kind of rough. She's like, it's really rough. But she oh, doesn't like Please it. fit. Yes, it does. Thank you. Lay goodness. on them like it does. No, she doesn't lay on them. We, They're we, very used to the kids. And patient. Okay, it feels like this is not, not the right size. So I don't know if I just like stuck them in the wrong. I got a metric and a standard set here. just like the Chinese. We're gonna use a metric on one side and a standard on the other. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what you would do if you were building yeah. a radio controlled airplane? Whatever's most confusing. Are you kidding me? It is actually? Okay, so hold on. Yeah, I can't get that one in, so I have to use the metric for this side. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, so when this thing is in its position that it's gonna be, there's gonna be play on both sides equally, okay? That looks pretty good. It's probably not perfect, but it's gonna be perfect enough for getting in the air. Because after all, this is a flying machine, from what I've been told. It is? Yeah. It's mostly a beautiful thing to sit on your counter mm. and cause you frustration and pain and suffering. Okay, I'm torquing the crap out of this now. If I would have realized that those were the other way, I would have totally made a reasonable accommodation for that by making a flat. We just leave it, can't we? That's fine. We'll be right. The door will close over it. Okay. 
Good. Have you cycled them yet? I will right now. <clears throat> Free. Free. And good. All right, guys. So when we come right back, we'll be flying as though this never happened. So if you watch to the end, you'll see this whole scenario, including the first flight from today. So it's gonna go from first successful 3200 4S, hopefully. Then it's gonna go to first successful 2200 4S, hopefully. Then we're gonna go to the original Maiden, which was crazy. Hmm. And then we're gonna go to the failed attempt. So that's what we're gonna try to do. If you stay around for that, you'll see it all. We don't mean to hide any of this. We just don't wanna like have people start watching that and be like bored out of their mind and say, why do we watch this channel? Screw this guy, he's boring. Okay, ready up. Guys, we're here with the Boeing 737 MAX. We get the AR-637, was that a T in there? Mm -hmm. And then we've got the, of course, landing lights and all that stuff ready to go. So we're gonna put this thing down. Twin 50 millimeter EDFs. Got everything ready to go. Stabilization. All the stuff is tested. We're gonna test again. Stabilization is not on because we haven't throttled. Throttle. Up, up, right, right, left, left. Up, down. Okay, so we should be good there. And we have master gain control on this knob. So we'll just double check that quick. Okay, all the way up. So we're gonna start with it all the way up. If you wanna kinda of go to that normal spot, we'll start at the end of the runway. We should be good for wind. A little bit of crosswind here. Coming this way, very light. You ready to do this? Yep. All right, guys. Is your timer cleared? Timer's cleared, thank you. My Vario is on, do you hear it? Yep. Turning down the gains. <laughs> Sound like I'm... Oh, shibbles. Gear closing. Turn the gains down. Man, that thing is fighting me. There we go with our gains just a little bit. MCATS hasn't taken me down yet. That's really annoying. You can definitely hear it. Didn't really want to. Okay, here we go, kind of out of the throttle. Man, that looks good. There's full throttle. Man, that would be a bad soundtrack to a crash. Burr, 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 crash, death, destruction. Gear coming out. That's speedy. Gear going up. I think we're going to the road. That was quite the save over the cornfield. She's fast, if you want her to be. A lot of yaw authority there. Definitely have too high a gain. It's fighting us a lot. 
Camera crew, you're doing a great job. Thank you for doing that. It does help to know where if you're going up or down. Okay, we'll try for a low pass here. 16 seconds on our three minute. Here we go. Man, that thing is really moving. Holy crappers. Gain is going down just a little bit. Okay, way out there. Gear coming down, hopefully. Stop taunting me, Vario. Reasonably good control authority on the ground. I can't hardly believe it. And that's quite the rollout. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh my goodness. I don't want to get run over. I got to run after it here. We'll wait for you. <laughs> okay. He did actually get it turned around on the road. And it's coming back this way. That was terrifying. <laughs> I landed with the wind. If I would have just been going the other way, I probably could have landed at half the speed. Man, that thing does look stinking good, doesn't it? No, that was terrifying. It was terrifying for me too, are you kidding? <laughs> oh. It's surprisingly easy handling on the ground. I did not expect it at all. I was expecting a squirrel from, basically a squirrel from hell. And I didn't get that at all. It did better ground handling than it did air handling. So I definitely have way too high a gains on the ailerons. I have a little bit high, too high a gain setting on the yaw. And uh, did you get any low? No, because I'm attached to everything. Going downhill. Man, that thing looks good, doesn't it? I want so badly to take off again, except I know that we desperately need to adjust settings. Well, and we're gonna be out of camera battery too. Yeah. So guys, in closing so far, cause my guess is we're gonna run out of battery. Um, that thing flies fast, like way faster than I want it to. I mean, it flies really, really fast. And to be honest with you, it's actually not too bad once you're on the ground. I figured it'd be horrible ground handling, but it's actually it's quite, good. quite good. And the crowd on that road usually makes it pretty bad. But tonight it just wasn't bothering us at all. Look how easy it is to taxi right along the edge of the... All right, let's get some low shots here. So this is the XRP Boeing 737 MAX 9. That was the True Maiden. We just got the radio set up like minutes ago. And it is gloriously gorgeous. Do you want to go in and check voltage? I do, but I want to bring it up to the, uh, up to the camera crew. That is so pretty. We gotta have a lot of power left. Okay, throttle cuts on. We're gonna go inside right now and we promise not to cheat. We'll show you the voltages. Okay. All right guys, so we're gonna whip open the top. If you haven't seen the build series, you can check it out on the playlist. We're just gonna pop that out, plug in our smart battery. Wow, there's 
43 percent hmm. 43 percent guys 30 percent so i think is, that cat? is there a cat in the subwoofer again i think there is <laughs> that's what it sounds like no there's three cats right here oh okay hmm. So Interesting. just kids probably outside playing. So basically what we learned from that is that the flight time at three minutes was probably not horribly wrong mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, like if you want to get it back. <laughs> yeah. So 25% now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you go through the balance lead, evidently it's not quite as accurate <laughs> um, or through the main discharge lead. So I think that that battery could actually be a little bit big for this plane, you know? Mm. I mean, the 2200 4S would give you plenty of power to get off the ground and be a lot lighter on your feet. We need badly to change our gains. So what we're gonna do is we'll run through that, but we're gonna switch these batteries. We've got a little 4S 2200 that's just done. So we'll pop that off the charger. We're gonna get this one ready. It's not gonna go yet because it's too hot right now but we'll have it ready to rock and roll. So this one is the 2200 4S 30C. Uh, the center of gravity would be, I felt like the center of gravity was right on. You saw a flare when I was landing. That was intentional. It wasn't accidental. I know it seems like it probably was, but it wasn't. So evidently getting the center of gravity right is important. Okay, so we'll get that plugged in. You'll notice that the landing lights don't come on immediately. That's because the servos haven't been energized. As soon as you hear the AS3X dance, hold on oh. a second. They must be swinging. <laughs> hold on. Hey, are you guys? Okay. Okay, so we have to change some setup, okay? So if you recall, if I go over to AS3X, The Vario, first of all, we need to turn the Vario off because that's super annoying. Yeah. So we can go down to telemetry, we can go to Vario and just turn that off. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that won't change anything. I mean, it's sweet to know that that works so good because it was plenty live for me, I thought. Yeah. Um, AS3X gains, flight mode one, two, three, okay. So you got zero, 50, and 100, okay. So what I want to do is I want to give it some throttle, okay. Throttle cuts on, all the way up. Thank God we figured out how to turn that up and no down. No kidding. We would have been screwed otherwise. Yeah. Okay, so that definitely is working, but I don't see an appreciable difference when we change the flight mode. So I'm not sure why that doesn't change. I guess I really don't care as long as I have access to turning it up and down here. I could also tie that switch to this with just a simple mix. It's not that big a deal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk into the forward Programming, wait for it to load, go to the gyro settings, AS3X settings, flight mode setup, flight mode channel. That's on C, okay, so that's fine. Oops. Okay, so we're fine there. So we'll go back, gains. Okay, so these are the three settings, okay? I don't see an appreciable difference, but what I need to do, I can, but we're not changing it when we adjust the gains. So I just need to make sure that this is attached to the output on there. But I would say, depending on which one we're in, I want the roll axis to be less by quite a bit. I don't care what setting I'm in. I'm gonna go down by 10 on each of them. We're at 5% phone. Okay. And then the pitch, I didn't feel like that was totally out of control. The yaw was way too much. So we're gonna go to 45. Then we're gonna go to 50. Then we're gonna go to 55. Okay, so that hypothetically will change the values. Um, pitch felt like it was probably about right. I didn't have problems with it. So, Hopefully the master gain still does what we need it to. Mm -hmm. So the only thing left here now would be to try another flight, which I'm a little bit scared to do because we're about to run out of battery. So we will bid the a farewell 
and come back possibly with another video. It might be on this video series, it might be on the next, but that's where we're gonna leave the settings for now. And uh, thanks guys for watching. Hopefully you like the lapel mics. If you didn't, well, I don't know what to tell you. Um, we don't have to do it, it'd be just fine with me. So this thing is beautiful. I really like the plane. If you wanna buy one, get one now, don't wait. Uh, you have to ship it from Hong Kong. Shipping's expensive right now, but if you want it, get it now because in three years when you're watching this video, you won't be able to get it because something will have gone horribly wrong and who knows, next COVID, whatever. So you also have to fix the nose gear. So if you haven't watched the radio setup or the build, you need to watch them both. The radio setup is painstaking. There's about an hour just on getting the nose gear to work. However, I would say my nose gear worked pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. So I would say whatever I did, do that. And if you can do it even better, do it better. Um, but for now, very cool plane. Flies fast like you expected it did. By the way, MCAT didn't crash. Just wanna let you know, in case you're watching. Thanks guys.